Hi there, it's Tracy here from the Papercraft Studio. Thank you for joining me today. So I'm going to show you how to make this Dragonfly Garden layering card. Um, so pretty, we're using vellum to colour this, uh, this dragonfly. And also, can you see this gorgeous embossing folder? Um, I'll show you which sets they're from. Dragonfly Garden um, has been in the catalogue for a while and there's a punch and a stamp set. Um, and then I've used this gorgeous uh, Leafful 3D embossing folder. So this is in the um, the July to December mini catalogue. And it's so pretty, just leaves and little um, flowers on the flowers or just leaves, maybe just leaves, but it's really, really pretty. So I'm gonna be using that a lot. Um, and then also I've used uh, Sunprints designer series paper. So you can see I've used this one here really pretty papers using um a starry sky and night of navy um gray granite so i've gone for the gray granite side and then also i use these so many times if you're going to get a set of dies get these um uh, stylish shapes dies you get circles squares and banners and they have that gorgeous stitching on them um it's actually really hard to see i've got one here in the catalog um so i'm going to go ahead and tell you the supplies you need to make this card so you need a piece of grey granite cardstock this measures 11 and a half inches by four and one eighth which is half of a4 and I've scored it in half you need a piece sorry or two pieces of uh, basic white cardstock these measure five and a half inches by three and seven eighths so one's going to go on the outside one's going to go on the inside to write on you need a piece another piece of grey granite cardstock this measures five inches by one and three quarters uh, the dsp also measures five inches by one and three quarters because this time we're just going to overlap them like that and then i've gone ahead and cut these but you need the second biggest um and the biggest um circles here so the biggest in gray granite and the second biggest in uh basic white and then you're going to need little scrap of grey granite and basic white to do these little squares and they're in the smallest um, squares in that set um okay and some vellum you need some vellum and you need some blend pens okay so first of all um we're going to stamp the dragonfly because we need to give the stays on ink a little time to um to dry in between okay so i'm going to get my mat here I've got a scrap of vellum, which I might find tricky to stamp on because it's all curled up because I've used it in my classes. Okay, so it stays on ink. You need to be really careful because it really does stay on. So try not to get it on you. And you're just going to kind of smoosh the stamp around, give it a few taps as well. So really ink it up. And then you're going to press quite hard on the vellum and straight back up, okay? And you need to do it so that you don't, um, stamp it too high up um, because you need to be able to get get the punch underneath okay so let's put that away before I put my arms in it okay I'm just going to leave that to dry for a little second so that's one of the biggest butterflies on there um, and then while that's drying just for a few seconds we can go ahead and emboss um, the one of these basic white layers and also this little um, circle as well so we're going to emboss both of those so I'm going to do that and come right back to you okay so with this smaller piece you can see I've just caught it in a corner here because I wanted some of it to be um, just un unembossed not embossed probably is a better way to say it and then to catch some of this so there we go so pretty and also this layer is also embossed I'm going to set that to one side because now this should be dry enough to punch so open up the punch here there is a little uh, smaller one as well but we're just going to use the bigger one for now so feed that one in and line up as best you can um, that looks about right little squeeze and then what we're going to do is color on the back now this is quite important because if you color on the side that's going to um to show on the card um you'll get i'll show you in a minute but you'll get a sketchy color it won't look as good so i'm going to flip it over and color here on the back and the back will always look um just fainter basically than than the other side um so 
I'm using um, three blend pens for this. I'm using the two Tahitian Tide, the dark and the light, and then also the light Orchid Oasis. So you could choose your colours, but for me, this was how I imagined my dragonfly looking. Okay, so move this down so you can see what I'm doing here. So on the body, I just coloured slightly over the back and depending on how strong your ink is, you may or may not see much of this through. And then I just did a little bit of Orchid Oasis on this these central parts of the wings. And when you do colour these, it will still look a bit like you've got you know it's quite sketchy but that's fine because when you when it's dry and you flip it over it will look amazing so i'm using the darker tahitian tide next and just kind of blending that over the um orchid oasis and it doesn't blend as well as it would obviously on card but we are coloring here on vellum so of course you could make it more detailed if you wanted to and then I'm going to use the lightest one just to finish this off. Just coming a little over the darker one. I love colouring on vellum. It's such a subtle um, look once you get to the other side. So if I show you this now. So this is the side that we've coloured on. It's a bit of shine because we just coloured on there but if you turn it over it's much more subtle and blended so you can see now why we're going to to um color on the on the back so i'm just going to leave that to dry for a second and we can go ahead and attach um the embossed piece you could do the debossed side or the embossed side so i'm going to do the embossed embossed side <laughs> i could have said it so many times and i can say it properly so liquid glue on the back just a little bit more because it gets into those grooves of the embossing and then we're going to oops, going to pick this up just leave a little border all the way around there we go how's that looking Move it down a little bit cool okay stick that on and then with the gray granite piece i'm going to pop it quite high up here and then you could use this side if you want to it would look pretty as well but I just wanted mine quite monochrome and let the kind of dragonfly be the pop of colour and then we're just going to um, offset this one just below so stick on your grey granite layer first so top left not too far down because we want the designer series paper to come down a bit lower glue on the back of this one when i first started designing this card i used this the uh the squares from the dies and i've used those a couple of times and i was like mm, hang on let's change it up a bit oh ah mine's moved <laughs> did you guys see that happening i didn't Okay, you'll pay more attention to yours and it won't move. <laughs> uh, mine's still a bit wonky there, but that's how it's going to have to be. This one's going to offset here. Yeah, so I thought I'd change it up and use the circles because I haven't really used those yet. Um, I've got glue all over my hands now as well. Okay, so with this um, grey granite stitched circle, um, you're going to stick that down just with glue. Make sure you've got the best stitching side that's going to go to the front. Okay, so I had mine quite high up, kind of about there. I still wanted to see plenty of that really pretty designer series paper. And then with this layer, I've popped that on dimensionals and I've offset it. You could just center it, but you know, you know me, I like to offset. So dimensionals here just a few on the back probably probably about four oops got two there I've just redone my nails so they're a bit shorter <laughs> i always seem to do this just for a video and then they're a bit tricky to get the backings off okay 
So decide which bit you want to wear and then stick that one on. So Dragonfly is quite probably uh, dry by now. And I'm just going to bend his wings there and there. So just around his body. Vellum is quite tough. You can, you can, you know, be quite strong with it. Um, so I just wanted that to pop up like that. And you can actually get away with a couple of mini dimensionals on the back and they don't show through. So once again, I've lost them. Here they are. <laughs> Woo. Um, so two, you can put one or two. Actually, I might have bent that a little bit too much. It's a bit not quite so creased. Uh, so one here. And like I say, they just don't show through because that's what I've used on here, which is really good. So take those backings off. Where did that one? And then we're going to pop the dragonfly on there and you can bend the wings back up a bit. So pretty. Okay, so the ribbon we're using is also grey granite and it's called Shimmer Ribbon. It's been in the catalogue for a little while. It's one of my favourites. And you need about six and a half inches. And with the ribbon, um, you're going to need a glue dot or two. And what I do is I fold it over um, with a little loop at one end. Um, and you can kind of have a play around how, how kind of big the loop you want to be and how much coming out. When you're happy with that, grab a glue dot and then peel back this top section and put the glue dot underneath. So you've got that in place now, your little crossover where you want it to be. And then take another glue dot, flip it over and put it on the back of that crossover. And then add it, attach it to your card. Oops. Where you, oh, he came off. Go back. I think it's because it's quite warm here. Uh, yeah, attach it where you want that to be. So I wanted some of the ribbon to be coming off here. And then as part of the set, um, here it says for a true friend. So you could use that or you could use another sentiment. Um, I've actually, um, there is a small one also in, um, I think it might be the penguin, penguin place, happy birthday, that fits in the little square as well. So that's another good one. So I'm stamping in um, grey granite and I've gone ahead and cut these two smaller squares in grey granite and um, basic white. So I'm going to use um, for a true friend again. I still have my other one out. I'm not sure if I do. The little happy birthday. So that's actually quite cute as well. If I can see it, I might stamp with it. No, I can't. <laughs> Let's go for this one. Okay. Um, and actually, it doesn't fit on straight. So I've gone on the diagonal. Um, for the little happy birthday, it will. Um, that's the one I've used. I had one stamped earlier. Um, so yeah, find a, a small stamp that will fit. But like I say, with this one, you'll need to offset it. Um, and then I've just offset those two um, together just with some glue in between, not too close to the edge. So slightly offset those so you can see the basic, um, sorry, not basic grey, grey granite underneath. And then to get this over the... Um, over the ribbon, I've just used um, a, di a dimension on either side. So um, they're the small ones. Let's use a bigger one either side. And it just kind of goes either side of the ribbon. Um, you could use, um, you know, part of the strip along here on the smaller ones, whatever you've got to hand, really. So I'm going to put it fairly near the edge on both sides because I need it to um, balance out around that ribbon. So position that however you want. I'm just going to go all offset. <laughs> and then I'm going to finish off, as I often do, with some gorgeous, gorgeous rhinestones. So let's pop one on there, another one in the little gap here, and then one up here. Gorgeous. I really hope you enjoy making that with me. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Oh, <laughs>